So this month, we have a new monthly thing. <laughs> Care for the poor. And it's been interesting on the minister's listserv to watch the conversation about that title. Um, and all of the articulations of what we do or do not believe about the word poor. <laughs> We're okay with care. <laughs> but uh, we had some we had some conversation about the word poor. Um, we touched last week on there's no such thing as unreal, because you can't create unreal out of absolute reality. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> so poverty must be real at its level of expression. Interesting that most of us, when we hear the word poverty, see an economic structure. Yes? Yes. There's a lot of poverty that has nothing to do with money. Nothing. Any part of us that has any resistance to caring for any aspect of creation at its level of expression is an area of poverty and not in the one meeting the love. <laughs> Catch that? <laughs> Divinity itself gives. It gives to every one of us exactly the same all the time unqualified giving us everything it is now I don't know about your individual history but I know about mine <laughs> there are plenty of moments that I created using the creative process of divinity that was born in me that were, shall we say, less than deserving of celebration. <laughs> <laughs> and never once, never once did what created me say, enough of you. Never once. No matter what I did, no matter what I believed, no matter how I showed up, no matter who I hurt, no matter how I behaved, I got the same amount of divinity poured into me, around me, on me, as me, through me, nonstop. We are here to do that with ourselves and one another. And it reminds me, <laughs> there's a line in some of the stuff we read in 12-step meetings. And one of them is something like, you know, what a tall order. And every time I hear it, my inner brain goes, holy crap, you want me to do what? <laughs> It's kind of the same way with this idea of compassion. You want me to do what? You want me to pour unqualified love onto everything? <laughs> onto everybody? No matter what? Yes. Yes, it does. And yes, I do. Because that is what we're here to be. See, when we understand that we are created out of the divine, by the divine, into exquisitely individualized expressions of it, 
for the sole purpose of being it, the doing kind of takes care of itself. Because when we really wrap our human experience around, we are here to be divinity in form. And if we dare to first see ourselves and then one another as pure divinity, you can't do anything but love. That's all that's available in that space of divinity. Here's what Ernest Holmes says about compassion which I find really interesting in the context of some of the conversations that we have about poverty and poor. Compassion is love indeed. And deed is in deed, two separate words. Okay. In action. Humanity and divinity will be identical when we recognize divinity in humanity. We must learn to see through the apparent, to not judge according to appearances, to realize that at the center of every person's soul, God is enthroned. Compassion and caring are the ties that bind us together in mutual understanding and in the unified attempt to uncover the divinity in each other. I'm going to stop there for a second. Myself a little marks so don't know where I was. If I am unwilling to meet you where you are, how, pray tell, might I be a part of your process of awakening? Is that possible? Not really. Not really. What we tend to do, and I don't think there is a malicious intent ever, and what we tend to do is, I'm over here, come on over, I, I'll, come on, the answer's over here. <laughs> when what we need to be doing is going over here. It, what comes up for me consistently with compassion is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If I'm hungry and freezing to death, and wondering where I'm going to be safe for my next breath, the chances of me hearing anything about the divinity that lives in me, not so good. I need to take care of my bodily needs first. So if we meet somebody where they are and love them right where they are, then we empower them to move forward. Continuing with what Ernest Holmes said, compassion is the most gentle of all human virtues, for it is the outpouring of the divine givingness through all. When the members of a community love one another, that community is solid, prosperous, and happy. It's a big error. <laughs> this is one of the most loving communities I have ever shared airspace with. I'm not one to blow smoke. <laughs> but you really are. And I thank you for that. The world thanks you for that. See, I didn't make a mark. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Nations are bound together by common interests and common affections. When the whole world realizes this truth, it will unite in thought and in action. Love alone can solve the world's problems and bring about the day of universal peace. If you have any part of you that just heard that and went, yeah, right. <laughs> then you have some poverty consciousness going on. Because you lack a full belief in the truth of love, in the power of love. So when we think about this care of the poor, let's take it out of people for just a minute. 
let's take it to awareness. Where are the pockets of poverty in our awareness of the consciousness of the richness that lives in us? Because that's the first place to practice compassion. See, I cannot be compassionate with you while I hate me. I can't be peaceful with you while I have inner turmoil going on. Just can't happen because I can't give what I'm not. What's true of me is true of all because there's only one of us here. <laughs> and we're all grappling with this at our own level of understanding. Divinity can only do through us what we allow. How do we allow it? Based on how we understand it. That's why we practice. That's why we keep showing up so we can find those little pockets that we don't even know exist. You go to see a practitioner, you're going to have them assist you in revealing your hidden beliefs. There's a reason we call them hidden. We don't know they're there. <laughs> okay? Doesn't make us bad, doesn't make us wrong, doesn't make us less than. It's rare that I get to accuse a whole room of something at the same time. <laughs> it makes you normal. <laughs> Now, I know some of you. We haven't been accused of that in a while. <laughs> it just makes us normal. Compassion is that place where we just embrace our beautiful human normalness. Because if we were supposed to be something other than human, guess what? You would be. <laughs> you wouldn't even know I'm saying these words because you'd be something else. <laughs> the universe is perfectly ordered. There's no accidental creation. None of us are, oops, made one too many human. That's not, that's not how it happens. So your human experience is already perfect. Please stop beating yourself up if you are at any level. If there's any part inside the little wheel in there, if the gerbil holds up signs while it's running through the wheel of your mind and says, stupid, <laughs> get rid of the sign. Don't get rid of the gerbil. <laughs> That's what a lot of us want to kill the ego. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be here without it. Mm -hmm. Just say it. <laughs> but you do get to take away the gerbil sign and hand it another one that says, I'm brilliant. Because you are. You're more brilliant than you even know. We all are. There is no way that in our human form, we are ever going to completely, 100% understand this thing called divinity. We're not. So quit trying to. Understand how it lives in you. Understand where it lives in you. Focus on understanding how you get to use that part of you to make your life as amazing as you want it. Because that's what lives in you. And anything that tells you less than that got to go. <laughs> it's got to go. Now, if I had the power to just whip out a magic wand and go, all gone. Trust me, I would. And trust me, I'm selfish enough, I would start with me. <laughs> Just in case it ran out of juice. <laughs> you get 
to live your magnificence. And you get to live it when you decide you get to live it. Not when I decide. Not when your wife decides. Not when your husband decides. Not when your kids decide. Not when your sponsor decides. When you decide. Because I can stand up here every Sunday and tell you how amazing you are. Tell you how magnificent you are. Tell you how the only thing that resides in you is perfect love. And if your gerbil is holding up signs going, <laughs> brother lost his mind, <laughs> then that's where you'll be, is in rejection of that truth. Now here's the good news. Whether you believe it or not doesn't change that it's true. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> So I just get to keep telling you. And if it irritates you, then I'm doing my job. <laughs> and if you're not able to get past your irritation and being so amazing, <laughs> come see me or hire a practitioner. And then you can pay to be more irritating. <laughs> At least then, you'll have an investment in the process. Because <laughs> some of us need to do it that way. Because some of us have blocks that we just haven't learned how to just receive it freely. Okay. How do I know this? I bought some practitioners some really nice vacations. <laughs> That's how I know. Pretty sure I built at least one therapist a whole home. <laughs> and I'm grateful I could. And what I'm most grateful for is that they had the wherewithal to put up with me while I got to know me. We all need a little help. We all need a little compassion. <coughs> And if you can't give yourself compassion, you can't give it to anybody else. You can write all the checks you want. And those checks are helpful. <laughs> and let's be clear. <laughs> Giving money to causes helps further the work of those causes. And if you're giving it from a sense of poverty, what's growing in you is more poverty. So you get to shift where you give from. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Giving is always part of the circulation. Okay. When I flip a switch on the wall, the electricity is already there. Flipping the switch doesn't create electricity. It actually removes the barrier to its flow. Mm -hmm. You go back in the kitchen, turn the water tap, water is going to come out, mostly because we pay our water bill. <laughs> but the water's already there. You're not sending a message to the Nevada Water District saying, yo, I'm going to turn the tap on now. And have some water. <laughs> no, it's already there. Compassion, love, already in you, already in you. Turning the tap on is the same process it is with the light switch and the faucet. All you're doing is removing the barriers that we've created against it. It's already there. What I most want you to hear this morning is that you cannot do anything to unqualify yourself from being loved. And you can't do anything to earn it because you are it. Let's take this into prayer. Knowing that there is only one infinite 
source. It is all there is. Its character, its essence, is love. Is brilliance. Is perfect order. Its activity is law. That activity that takes the impression, the idea, the heart's desire of the one and makes it happen. It is that law of automatic doing in exact perfection through what is thought, believed, and given to it. Knowing this to be true, I know by virtue that I am here in form that the divine thought to make me. That I am a divine idea in the mind of the one source. And that my very existence is held together by the continuation of that idea. And what is true of me is true of all. So each and every one, a perfect, divine idea in the mind of the infinite itself, held together in the consciousness of the one, intentionally, brilliantly, lovingly, to exist on purpose. What a joy to recognize the magnificence of each individual. Knowing that each is a divine idea in the mind of the one, I know that it lives, moves, and has its being in, through, and as its creation. So it must be in each of us. And so I feel everything inside of me rise up in that holy, wow, place of gratitude. As I allow the depth of that to sink into my being. And allow that love to permeate every fiber of my humanness. And so from that gratitude, I release my word into the activity of love and law that only knows, yes, that only knows create and love its creation. And I invite you, if any of this resonates with you, if any of this is your prayer to, to join me as we anchor it together by saying, and so it is.